But first, we are going to put together the two-way Hans Rudolph valve. First, we have the main piece, and we are going to attach other pieces to this to make the Hans Rudolph two-way valve. So you have a little diaphragm, and you want to make sure that uh, air will be flowing in through the white piece. So attach it to where, if you press it with your finger, it goes in. And then put it on the main piece and make sure it is tight, but not too tight. And then we will take a second clear piece to make sure the air will flow out as well. And so we will take another diaphragm and place it in the clear piece with it going out and screw this on. And again, tight, but not too tight to where you cannot unscrew it. Next is the spit valve. This is when it is in the participant's mouth and spit can accumulate here. It just fits in perfectly on the bottom of the valve. And then next we have uh, the mouthpiece to put on. First you have to put a little connector on. And so screw it in like so. And then you actually have the actual mouthpiece that you put in the participant's mouth. And what you wanna make sure is pinch to put it on and then to have about a quarter of an inch from the actual silicone mouthpiece to the main part of the uh, valve. And there you have it. So next, to actually attach the mouthpiece to the parvometabolic heart, we have to attach it to a plastic tube that is actually attached to the parvo. Um, the reason why this plastic tube is suspended from this arm is because when a participant is on the treadmill, they want to be able to not be constricted to where their head can be when they are doing a VO2 max test. So to do this, simply, you want to make sure the white valve is facing away so that air can flow through when, when you are breathing through the test. And so again, pinching the tube onto the clear part and making sure that it is snug on there and a quarter of an inch from the actual valve to give enough leeway. After you've assembled the mask, the next step is then to turn on the full CPU and Parvo itself. Behind the actual system, the switch back here, it's the master switch you, you hit to therefore turn on the actual system. This will not turn on the CPU though. The Parvo takes 20 minutes to warm up, so before each test you should come up here 20 minutes before to warm, warm up the system. After you turn that on and you turn the CPU on, next is you come hit this, this, this uh, little icon called True One. Right here on the screen, you're going to click that. Stop. Once you have gone through the process and waited 20 minutes, the next step is to click on the gas calibration tab. Click on this, you'll see a, a new, new window come up that states that you need to put the room temperature in, the humidity, and the barometric pressure. Uh, right, right to the next of the Parvo, you will see this little device, and this what, what, what you can get from this is the, the temperature in Celsius, the humidity, and the pressure. So what we'll do is we'll go in here and change this to what, what it says right now, so 19 degrees Celsius, relative humidity is 72%, because it's South Georgia, and the barometric pressure, which is 756. Okay, next we're gonna click OK. And you'll see it says come, turn on get, get Cal Gas to 3 PSI. So we come over here, and this is right now, this is in the off position. So what we'll do is we'll turn this 90 degrees to the right. Okay, we'll turn this, and you'll see you should have. A little come up with less than five, and you'll see this almost needs to be changed, but this, these should be going up as well. So then we click OK. okay. And now it's doing a 15 seconds to analyze. Okay, next step is now we're gonna do the flow meter calibration. So you're gonna take this three liter calibration syringe, which is gonna act like an artificial lung. You're gonna take the tube that's hooked up to the parvo, 
and you're going to connect these the same as we did before. You pinch this slightly to, to uh, place it in here. Okay. Now these are maybe these should secure no no wiggle room. And now we're going to come to the flow meter calibration tab. And, and here what we're going to do is is we're going to now click sample baseline tab on the on the top right. Okay. So it's come up with this. So now first we should do one detections. Uh, so we, we pull the plunger all the way out and all the way in. You should hear a thud at the end. Next one is just four flushes, so that gets a, gets a reading. Okay. Next here comes five strokes. The first one will be 50 to 100 milliliters. And you want these strokes to be within 2% as you can see here, it looks like we are. So the next one will be 100 to 200. Okay, and we're good right there. So the next one is 200 to 300. Okay, and the last one will be 300 to 400. Here's the last stroke, 400 to 500. Okay, and now we are done. So we are right at the 2% error, so we are, we, this would be a, a valid calibration setup. You can just click save. Next thing we have to do is to put on the headpiece on the participant. So on the back is going to be a little spin wheel, and while they place this on their head, that will be to adjust the tightness around the forehead area. Is it nice and snug? All right, and so we make sure it won't move. And then we have the mouthpiece that we assembled earlier on in this video. And we are going to place them through the little holes that are on the sides of the headpiece. And as I am doing that, the participant will be asked to try and put the mouthpiece in her mouth at a comfortable location. And so we want the mouthpiece to be comfortably in her mouth. And so that may have to come closer to her. And so in order to keep it closer, we just adjust the mouthpiece or the headpiece, excuse me at a comfortable location. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. All right, and if the participant could stand on the treadmill, straddle the treadmill, please. What we have to remember is that the white is going to be facing away and then that the plastic tube will go into the clear part. So remember to pinch, put on, and allowing for a quarter of an inch of room. All right, next we are going to disassemble the headpiece and mouthpiece in cleaning solution. So for the headpiece, where the forehead of the participant was, you have a little foam piece. Do not put this in the Cydex solution, which is what I will show in a couple of seconds. Um, and then with this headpiece as well, this does not go in the Cydex solution. This is just going to be wiped down in soap and water. Now, with the actual mouthpiece, we will disassemble each piece and it will be placed into a Cydex solution for 20 minutes to ensure proper disinfectant precautions. Uh, the actual mouthpiece that is made out of silicone do not leave it in the Cydex solution for the full 20 minutes as it will uh, eat away at the mouthpiece and mess it up. She is now cleaning the mouthpiece, the silicone mouthpiece that was attached to the two-way valve and placing it in the Cydex solution. And now she is properly detaching all of the pieces of the two-way Hans Rudolph valve and placing it in the Cydex solution to where it will stay for 20 minutes. So 
after you've placed all of your Hans Rudolph valve assembly pieces into the Sinex solution, now what she'll do is she'll need to run soap and water through the tubing itself. So what she'll do now is place some water into the tubing. And after that, what she'll do now is place some soap into one of the solutions. And now all you have to do is just run it back and forth. Now after you've done this to adequately get to thoroughly wash the tube, you will then rinse it out and place it on the rack to dry. Okay, so after they've been soaking for 20 minutes, you're going to take it and place it on the rack for further drying just to let it dry by itself. Now time to take what you've learned in your apprentice and apply it where you are now a Jedi.